Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kayona, and it is my pleasure to be able to interview Ms. Karima Es Sabar, the CEO of Quark Venture LP. Quark Venture is a venture capital investment firm headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, that is focused on equity financing of innovative biotechnology and health sciences companies with breakthrough technology platforms and projects. And I'm very excited to be able to interview her today as part of the CSPC's 2022 interview series. We at the CSPC are very thankful for the support of Quark Venture LP and for Karima's support as an active member of the CSPC community. Welcome, let's begin. Thank you, Kiona. Where does Canada's uh, report card stand on the investment and output in science, research and development and innovation? What have we done well and what are the big missing pieces that would help us maybe a better global leader? It's a very good question. Um, Canada has done many things really well. Um, we are very good in Canada at being creative and having amazing programs that we start with. Whether you look at the IRAP program or you look at um, some of the um, uh, credits, tax credit programs that we have, um, the, like the SHRED program, or whether you look at the science investment programs in uh, the NCEs, the CSERS, um, and more recently with government doing some bigger investments in the Strategic Science Fund and the Strategic Innovation Fund. We're very good at starting programs that frankly other countries look at, borrow from us, improve on, and build on. What we're not good at is doing the advanced versions and modernizing those programs. Some of these programs are 20, 30 years old. We don't do the 2.0 version and the 3.0 version. And the challenge with that is that we don't keep up uh, in terms of scale and scope of funding programs. So that's you know, one of our biggest challenges. But we have invested in science and technology very well. We've invested in uh, our tertiary education very well. What we haven't done is invested in scaling things up and anchoring them uh, in Canada so that they translate into economic benefit. And so I think that what we need to do as a next step is have some bigger programs like uh, the US does with BARDA and DARPA and those sorts of programs. And, and hopefully we're looking at doing that now. Wow, that's really exciting. And regarding your experience and background with all the different points in the biosciences ecosystem, from big pharma to startups, incubators and venture capital investment uh, uh, firms and, and, uh, and policies. What would you say are some actions uh, taken by the government that have the biggest impact in, in regarding the science uh, sector in general or the health and biosciences sector? Um, and how can we transform um, Canada into an economic engine? So, as I said earlier, um, we have some good, good uh, programs that we've done. The innovation ecosystem starts with great education and high quality science and scientists. And um, so we've invested well in our universities. We have some wonderful scientists. We uh, have been innovating in Canada for over 100 years, starting with Benting and Best and the insulin story to uh, more recently, as of yesterday, uh, you know, the Peter Cullis story where Acuitas uh, developed the lipid nanoparticle technology, which was pivotal to uh, the Pfizer vaccine, mRNA vaccine in COVID. Wow. So we've done a lot of innovation in Canada. Again, what I would repeat is that what we don't do well is scale up. We we start well, we do startup companies very well. Um, we have some good government programs uh, to incentivize the early stage stuff. But what has been a challenge is keeping Canadian companies in Canada, anchoring them here, and keeping our talent, the wonderful pipeline of people who come through our universities, 
staying in Canada, working here, and building more companies here. They tend to go to other parts of the world because those jobs didn't exist here. I think we started looking at scale up a little bit. If you see um, some of the companies um, like Epcelera and uh, Precision Nano and other companies, government has started helping to invest in them. But we also need local Canadian capital. It's not enough to have foreign capital investing in our companies because they can move the companies. We need to have Canadian venture capital uh, and we need to have perhaps uh, Canadian pension funds having part of their funding going towards, uh, you know, developing and advancing companies that are here. So there's a lot of work that can be done, needs to be done. I think the big thing that people feel, if you want to really have an innovation economy, is that you need to have an industrial policy and an, an industrial strategy to build an innovation economy. You need to have a 10, 20 year plan with a budget attached to it, identifying the big sectors that are going to be invested in that we are world leading in. So we have to invest in our science that's uh, and in our excellence where we are leading uh, and pick sectors, that you, whether it's the clean tech, the health biosciences, the agri-foods, there are a number of areas of innovation mm -hmm. uh, that Canada could be, could be leading in. Uh, and so this is the hope, I think, of the community that we will now have this kind of a dedicated industrial policy in which the R&D and I policy will feed in, the talent and skills will feed in, the uh, trade and commercialization will feed in. All the different uh, elements need to come together. We can't have siloed policies. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Definitely, there is some good work being done and there's uh, much more that can be done, but that's encouraging to know where we are um, headed. And in your opinion, Karima, on the value of the CSPC and its position in the community for convening connection and capacity building in the science and policy landscape, what would you say regarding that? Well, the CSPC uh, clearly uh, is an interesting organization. It's the you know only organization I know looking at policy in science and connecting and focused on, on the policy around science in Canada and how that uh, can materialize into the economic development piece. So I think it's great because it brings all the different uh, stakeholders in this agenda together who are interested in the development of science and the value of science in driving the economy. Um, uh, the government, uh, business, startup companies, um, you know, incubators, accelerators, universities, academics, everybody who is interested in this is brought together by the CSPC. So it's a, it's a very good organization uh, to, to collectively um, coalesce everyone. Very true, yes. Yeah, the CSPC is doing some really great work in, in forging the connections between the science and the policy worlds, and that is um, very much needed. So very, that's very true. Thank you very much. And we are very thankful for your engagement with the CSBC. What do you see is the biggest benefit and value of attending this year's conference? Well, I think after sort of three years of um, no face-to-face -face with COVID, um, it, uh, people are realizing how important it is to have the personal interactions, the face-to-face -face connections, the uh, getting together um, uh, in, in this way, um, having collision space where we can meet. I mean, I've just met a few people, uh, you know, from BC who I haven't seen in years, you know, here in Ottawa. You need a conference like this where you are having face-to-face -face meetings and interactions. There's a lot we can do on Zoom, but not everything. Mm -hmm. And that human interaction, uh, in business development, in collaborations, um, you need to meet physically. So I think it was very important to have this conference this year. And it's important to have a conference every year to have at least a chance once a year to get together face to face with people. 
Wow, that's very true. I really do agree with that. Um, meeting up in person is very important. And as you said, while, while um, there is value in doing things online, nothing beats connecting with people in person and engaging with all that human interaction has to offer. Well, thank you very much, uh, Karima, for your time and your presence today. It was such a pleasure to be able to interview you today as part of the CSPC 2022 interview series. Um, thank thank you. you again.